Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a upcoming game in early access that allows you to be the Secretary of a Navy of a great power during the 1890s up through, I think, toward World War II, uh, and build ships, design ships, manage fleets, and fight in wars. Now, the game also has a sort of a custom battle mode and then a Naval Academy mode where you design ships to overcome particular challenges. Now, as of what is in the game right now, the Naval Academy mode and the custom battle mode are both in the game, and a very bare-bones version of the campaign where you actually act as the Secretary of the Navy is in the game. It is basically just a war between Germany and Britain in 1890, and that's what we're currently playing. The campaign is new, uh, but I would assume when it's complete, it'll really be the, the heart and soul of the game, uh, but we'll see. We are playing as Germany in this campaign, and it is March of 1891, so we've been fighting for a little over a year. We do have a lead in terms of victory points. Over the last couple of turns, the war's tide has really changed at sea. The British had just three months ago 15 armored cruisers, which are their heaviest vessels. And since then, we've reduced that, f that, uh, that force down to 11 heavy cruisers. And so the war's starting to tilt in our favor. Um, we also have been able to blockade the British Empire uh, based on our power projection. I put all my ships at sea. Uh, it is very expensive to do that, but we do have the funds for the moment to complete that. Partially because I got a huge cash inflection because I badly mismanaged my finances and the game basically gave me a huge penalty on a prestige basis, which I'm assuming is how the game scores things. Um, and then also naval per er, and also unrest. But my recent victories have put unrest back into a manageable 2.1, and my naval prestige has started improving from a low of negative 28 back toward negative 19. So things are starting to tilt in the right direction. And frankly, those extra $30 million of cash, probably worth it to be able to put the whole fleet at sea and blockade the British Empire, which for some strange reason in the 1890s has no battleships. They historically had like 60 battleships. Germany didn't even have a single battleship at this point. Anyway, it's it's alternate history. So we do have a couple of battles uh, that we are likely going to have to play. I don't know if we'll get through both of them in this particular video or just one of them. There's a naval battle off the coast of Norway with one German battleship, two heavy cruisers and a torpedo boat uh, facing off against one British heavy cruiser, two light cruisers and a torpedo boat. And there's also a convoy action, which is mystifyingly occurring between Denmark and uh, Sweden here um, with uh, one German heavy cruiser, light cruiser, torpedo boat, and two British heavies. Um, yeah. We also have been moving some ships. So I have ordered uh, two battleships, a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser to move from Danzig to Wilhelmshaven. Um, and you can see their, their route here in this checkered uh, green line. And then we've also ordered two light cruisers and three torpedo boats to move up from Hamburg to Wilhelmshaven. I don't know exactly how the game treats concentrating your forces, but I feel like I'm hoping that a concentration of forces leads to a greater likelihood of forcing a naval battle. But the way these battles spawn, like between the almost the Black Sea, or we had one in the English Channel and one in uh, uh, the Far North Sea, seems a little bit strange. Like, I, I don't I don't exactly know. But with that being said, let's go ahead and... Uh, and get started here. So what are we going to fight first? I don't think we're going to... Well, oh, by the way, we also are funding research fully. Uh, we're working on rangefinders, armor quality, and engines. Engines and armor quality look like they're almost to the next tech level. Um, and then after that, I want to definitely pour some resources into cruiser design because I want to get bigger hulls because right my, now my armored cruisers are limited to 3,500 tons. With that being said, I think we'll go ahead and do the big battle here. We'll do a heavy British cruiser and two lights as well as a torpedo boat versus a German battleship, the Oldenburg, which fought in one of our battles, I want to say two episodes ago, and then the Carl Friedrich Rune and uh, S-18 torpedo boat. This is the first battle we're going to be fighting against the British where they actually have one of their torpedo boats in action. They have a fair number of them. They have 27 torpedo boats. We just haven't fought them yet. Their heavy cruiser or their light cruisers... It may look like a real mismatch here with two heavies and they're them only having two lights, but their lights have like seven or eight inch guns. And these, the Rune and the Friedrich Karl are actually ships of the, the Rune is of the Rune class, uh, which only has six inch main guns. And then the Friedrich Karl is, if I can find it, we'll 
filter by CL or CA is a side lift class. So she has bigger guns at, at eight inches. Her crew is, is green though. So they won't be very accurate. The rune, however, has regular crew training, which means they should be better trained. And the Oldenburg has seasoned crews. Um, so that should also uh, help things out. So let's go ahead and fight the battle here. Okay. We're going to jump in here. The Oldenburg is, whoops, is the lead. We've got a torpedo boat screening on one side and division two is set to follow. So division, division one's the battle line. That's the battleship. And then the heavy cruisers are set to follow the battleship formation in a separate division while the TB is set to, I would think screen. Let's go ahead and have this guy set to screen and give AI control. Or maybe not. Maybe that's a bad idea. Where are they going to go? So they're going out that way, uh, which is actually the direction that uh, the enemy fleet is reported to be. Let's go ahead and slow the battleship to 14 knots and turn it in that direction as well. The heavy cruisers are set to follow. So the battleship will take the majority of the punishment up front. Uh, and then the heavy cruisers should be able to get their gunfire off to support. That would be the ideal. And one of the things I have noticed with my, my ships is I generally don't go heavy on the um, bulkheads. So presumably these this little grids, these grids here represent compartments. And so the more of those you have when you take flood damage, uh, the greater the likelihood of, uh, of limiting your damage. But when you have fewer compartments, obviously one punctured compartment is is more impactful than when you've got, you know, twice as many compartments. So just something to consider when you're designing your ships, but adding more compartments adds a lot of extra weight too. So, all right, let's speed things up. We'll let the torpedo boat go out there and scout for us. Our battleship is turning roughly in the direction of the Northwest, which is where the report says the enemy is. Depends if it's more North or more West. Not sure. All right, things are slowing down to times five, which might mean the enemy's shooting at us. We haven't spotted anything yet. Enemy smoke spotted to the west. Oh, there they are. I like how the second we spot guys, like we're just opening fire. There's no time to like figure in range or like what is out there. They just automatically like we see something open fire. Okay, this is... This torpedo boat got awful, got in awfully close. I'll set him to aggressively torpedo the enemy. I'm curious if the AI is better at launching an attack than me. This is a wolf pack class. Torpedo boat under AI control. The enemy's sailing almost directly into torpedo range. We've set torpedo fire to aggressive. Why are they not shooting? Oh, there they go. Torpedoes are away at this lead enemy heavy, which is already in the midst of a turn. I think one of them will hit, though. Got it. The other fish went missed, but the enemy heavy cruiser, the Hogue, just took a torpedo near the stern of the ship. Unfortunately, this torpedo boat S-18 will almost certainly die. <laughs> Her rudder's broken, both, both engines broken, a fire floating. But you know what? Suicide charge for the win. I'll let the AI manage that. Meanwhile, that will help things out considerably. One torpedo boat for a heavy, definitely worth the trade. The Hogue is at what? 40% float. The enemy has a torpedo boat of its own up here at about two. I can't actually see the range on that. Probably out by about two kilometers. Oldenburg has not taken any hits yet. Is this a CL? Is that another fish? The, tor the enemy torpedo boat is wasting its torpedoes on the S-18. Oh, man, this gets even better. 
So the the TB18 should really retreat at this point. But it's taking fire from the enemy. And now it's sinking. But the sunfish wasted all but one of its torpedoes on it. So that works. Enemy CL over here. Let's go ahead and turn hard over. Let's get the formation. I want to parallel these guys going the other way away from this enemy light cruiser. The Hogue is at 50%, so they are repairing some of their flood damage. We did just get a main battery hit there of 104 damage with an overpen. She's almost dead in the water. Everybody's concentrating fire, but we've only really got our forward guns in action at the moment. All right, we'll level out a bit. Or straighten out a bit. I don't think any of my other ships... Oops. It's too easy to turn sometimes. None of my other ships have torpedoes, right? Yeah, they don't. All right, so we're going to try and pound the CA head on. We are taking some damage from the CL back here. How far out are they? 2.9 kilometers? I'm only moving at 14 knots to try and improve accuracy. We've got about an 11% chance of a hit. I wonder if I can aim... I'd like to have my secondaries focus on the torpedo boat and my primaries focus on the heavy cruiser. But I don't know how to do that. I know the AI sometimes splits its fire, but I've never seen the ability to do that myself. Couple of hits there, a little bit of flotation damage on the Hogue. She's stabilizing. Critical damage close. It's at 41. It turns red at 439. But it looks like they are pumping that water out. It does feel like as the enemy takes like more hits, they really should get less effective at damage control. And maybe they do, but it, it doesn't seem terribly noticeable. Oh, it switched its fire. Back to the CL here behind the formation. All right. We did get a hit. I guess I'd rather finish off the enemy CA first. Switch to HE. Well, let's see. Let's see what the battleship can do against this TB, which is, oh my God, it got a 12 inch hit. Oh no, it was a four inch hit on the enemy torpedo boat right away. I'd love to just get rid of this guy as a threat. He's currently at well outside torpedo range, but got a couple of nice hits on him right away. Did 40 float damage with that four inch gun. It's probably a waste of effort at the moment. I thought there were two CAs, is it just the one? Or no, it's the one CA and two CL. So this is a CL. Or CA. CL. CL. How many torpedoes do the CLs have? Enough. Four. Our heavies are firing at the enemy CL but not doing any damage. So our formation is in a line formation here. My torpedo boat's already sunk. It's probably enough on the TB, right? Overpen with an HE route. Did some more flotation damage. Her engines are breaking. All right, let's turn the formation to get a little bit closer. What's our accuracy on the CL? 
Why doesn't it give me an accuracy estimate? 3%. Still the best accuracy on the TB. Over pen and fire. Have these guys hit this other enemy ship at all? A little bit. They're switching their fire to the Hogue now? I'm okay with that. That's the enemy's biggest ship. She's still pretty much dead in the water. Getting a couple partial pens. Straddling that enemy torpedo boat. Partial pen main gun damaged, not destroyed, but damaged. I need to have better armed guns. The Oldenburg fought in the last in, in a battle a couple of days ago, and it had one of its main guns knocked out as well. Fortunately, no flash fire there to like ignite, ignite the whole ship. But okay, so the enemy torpedo boat disappeared under the smoke screen. I don't think any of my ships have smoke screen capabilities. Yeah, the heavy cruisers don't. Light cruisers do. Torpedo boats might. But obviously the... Um, heavy cruisers don't. I do like that we're splitting our fire because we can't bring the turrets to bear on both ships. Although maybe we can, because we just fired them both off there. We are at what range? Three kilometers. This is kind of a long-range fight for ships of this era, especially what we've seen in the game so far. We're going to go ahead and turn in to try and close the range a bit more. Over pen and flooding on the hook there. That's nice. Still got engine and rudder problems. I don't really care about anything other than I don't want to lose any of my ships. And I want to make sure we sink the enemy heavy cruiser. Everything else, any other damage we inflict here would just be gravy. But if we can get the enemy fleet down to 10 heavy cruisers, that'd be great. I'd imagine that torpedo hit for my torpedo boat will, will aid us with that. It obviously crippled the enemy heavy cruiser right at the onset of the battle, even though our own torpedo boat crew was eviscerated under a swarm of enemy fire. I think it was worth the cost, especially if we get enemy heavy out of it. We just got to be careful not to get too close and to result in, you know, our own ships getting destroyed from enemy torpedoes because they all have torpedoes and we do not. Although I can turn more tightly using the rudder control down here than with the right click uh, heading command. Um, and so that's something I should I should use. I used once earlier in the battle, but that's something I haven't used a lot in previous fights. All right. So we're plastering the CA. It's taking more flooding damage down below 30%. I can't actually see any of the other enemy ships at this point. Apparently, I can only see the Hogue, which we're pretty close to. We're inside three kilometers. It's still returning fire. It's still game. We're getting a lot of ricochets because the angle of the enemy hull is such that we don't have, like, if we take a look, the enemy, we don't have a broadside angle on them. So I assume they're turned away from us. They appear to be more flooding damage. But they've still got one of their uh, rear turrets in action. We just saw a six inch hit from the rune. We're at about 1.8 kilometers. We've got two columns of enemy smoke screen out there. So they are getting some penetration on the battleship. Moderate superstructure damage, one turret moderately damaged. Still well outside torpedo range. And given they can't really move... I doubt they'll uh, accomplish anything. We've got about a 20% chance for hits at this range. Nice. Penetration, destroyed casemate, engine damage, and fire, and flooding. That might be the hit that finishes off the Oldenburg there. Yep, she's sinking. Or not the Oldenburg, the uh, enemy CA. All right, well, the enemy CA is destroyed. So their, their fleet's flagship is gone. We damaged the torpedo boat, but don't know where it is at this stage, which is dangerous. All right. 
So we spotted the enemy heavy cru or light cruiser. She's out here at about four kilometers range. Has this thing this thing suffered any damage? So I'm at 98 and 100. The Delhi is at 90 structure damage. So I'm not sure what did that damage to her. Could have been my CAs. You can see she's chilling inside her own smoke screen. The other enemy CL is detected. So we're going to try and wipe out the enemy fleet. I don't know if we'll succeed, but we'll try. Ooh, a nice hit there. Penetration, fire, and flooding. Over 400 damage by a single 12-inch shell. Only killed 10 crew, but, you know. So our entire formation is going to cross the broad side of the deli. We will have to be careful to stay outside torpedo range. We're about half a kilometer away. Floats at 80, structures at 75. Be great to get another nice broadside in here. When's that next salvo coming? 1.2. He's going to turn in here, presumably, to try and get some torpedoes off. Let's slow things up a bit. All right. So turn the ship away. I probably got too close. They're going to... They're going to launch. Going to try and manually turn this thing a little bit more abruptly. Jack up the speed too. Why are we slowing down? I guess our funnel has suffered moderate damage. That could be why. We're in a pretty nice turn in here, though. Rune, what are you doing? Why are you turning that direction? Oh, God. You're turning toward him. That's just asking for a torpedo. All right, we're going to break this formation up. Rune is, is hard over. She's definitely going to get enemy torpedoes fired at her. Yeah, torpedoes are out. Heading toward the rune, which is hard over. Turning away. I think that first torpedo will miss at least. This guy's damn close. How far? Half a half a kilometer, but because of the evasive maneuvering, we don't have good hit rates yet. Rune has suffered engine and rudder damage. So slow her down. Looks like she's stuck in a turn. So Rune is at 95 structure, 100 float. Meanwhile, the Delhi is at 67 structure. I don't know if she's got another broadside fish in her or not. She does. Turn. You can turn that way at least. I hate to turn into it, but it didn't look like I had an option to turn away. Looks like that is going to be abrupt enough of a turn to avoid the fish. The rune is also suffering from the fact that it is the six inch gun heavy cruiser. Can we please get more hits on this guy? We are doing like nothing, and this guy's at absurdly close range. Rune's taking flooding damage. There we go. Penetration, flooding, casemate, and fire. Rear turret looks like it's on fire on the rune. Rune might have better bulkheads than I thought. Is it 84 float?
Many bulkheads. So that's helping Rune take damage. Secondary tower destroyed. Delia has seven inch guns. Fifty percent structure now. Six inch guns about to fire. Flash fire. She blew up. Ammo detonation. Delia is done. I think. Something detonated. It said ammo detonation. She's rapidly sinking. But technically isn't dead yet? Three inch shell hits CLF belt. Ammo detonation. 1500 damage. So she didn't sink yet. I guess that must have been like a maybe ready ammunition. The other enemy CL is coming up here. She's largely undamaged and is almost in torpedo range. Get the rune the fuck out of there. How is Delia not dead yet? 38 structure despite the flash fire. She's like crippled, but still alive. Rune is switching fire to the other enemy CL, which is close. Able to make almost full speed. Let's try and get out of range. I'm assuming at 37 float or 37 structure damage. Delia's almost dead either way. Careful firing over the top of friendly ships. You will do friendly fire there, Oldenburg. So Rune is a well-designed ship. This is an auto-generated ship by the AI. She seems to be well-designed, though. She's taken a lot of punishment in this fight and still hanging in there. The many bulkheads obviously doing, doing good work for her. All right, let's speed things back up a little bit. Battleship, we're going to turn toward the enemy. We're now focusing all our fire on this lead enemy cruiser, the Durban, which has the rune at extreme torpedo range, but is not fired yet. There we go. Nice penetration and fire from a 12-inch shell there. You can see it just wrecked the center of the enemy ship. We are not going to end battle, even though we have the option. She's going to turn away. Well, she's trying to go for the Carl Friedrich. Just like coming straight at me. Man, your accuracy is so bad. I can't wait till these uh, Sidelitz class cruisers have, have better crews. I'm going to switch fire back to the Delia for the uh, heavy here in a moment, for the battleship in a moment. All right, penetration amp, engine damage. Penetration, flooding damage, another 12-inch shell hit on her. Okay. That seasoned crew on that uh, Oldenburg is the decisive factor in these battles so far. All right, so we've switched back to the Delia, which is a 36 structure and 58 float. Still has rudder problems. Secondaries are getting some nice partial pens. Starting a fire back again. Nice. 
nice penetration flooding. Got to finish this guy off. We got to get both of these guys now. Now we've crippled them both so badly. No, I like how I have no, like, there's no semblance of formation in my line anymore. Penetration flooding, 402 damage. I'm just kind of surprised that ammo detonation didn't do more damage. I guess, again, it must have been a ammunition storage, like, inside a turret rather than the actual magazine going up. That last hit did a lot of flotation damage on the Durban. She's down to 20 float Sometimes the AI mysteriously changes who it's shooting at in a way that I don't understand. It's like, oh, they're down to 20 floats, so let's switch our fire. Like, okay, I guess they're not an immediate threat anymore. But don't you want to sink them? Don't you want to finish them off? But I get firing at the closer ship because you get better accuracy. Still, there's like, I have, I have not fought this battle with any sort of concentration of force that makes any kind of sense. Penetration fire, penetration flooding. Must just be flooding existing compartments because the float's not going down. Both these guys are crippled at this point. Delia's at 29.34. Dur Durbin is at 44.29. Okay. Let's go, boys. I mean, I guess I, if I had kept my torpedo boat at this point, I could I could close the range and finish them with torpedoes. Ooh, nice. Penetration fire flooding. Firing over the heads of the heavy. Penetration flooding. That should be it. A, th a 200 and a 100? Yep. Delia sinking. Or Delhi. I keep calling it Delia. It's Delhi. Oh, my God. Oh, 30 minutes in, people are going to be like, this guy's a moron. That's what you get when you record live sometimes. You know, sometimes it's easy to be like, oh, I can't believe you didn't fix that in post or whatever. It's like, well, when you're recording a live stream and that's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the format of your content. I could go back and edit every word every time I said Delia and replace it with Delhi and then it would just sound really weird too. It'd be like, la da la da la, Delhi, la da la da la. So, anyway. All right, Durban. Let's finish her off. We got three, three ships firing on her. She's crippled. It's really all about those big guns, though. I can see why, you know, based on the way that these paddles go. Rarely ever does a secondary do serious damage. Like, we've seen a couple foreign shell hits. Actually, I think the ammo detonation was a foreign shell hit. But generally speaking, like, if I just had more of the heavies, that would make these battles way more efficient, I feel like. So I can see why, you know, at least based on these results in this video game, which is obviously not real life, why you would, you would start thinking about the uh, concept of the all-big-gun ship. Because the trade-off and damage is so remarkable. Okay. Give me another hit. It's like my gunners have gone cold. My gunners have become the Atlanta Falcons in the, the, the Super Bowl versus the Patriots. Sports reference. All right. Twelve inches are repairing. Twenty-one percent chance of a hit. I feel like I had one more twelve-inch hit, and she's a goner. Floats down below twenty. So these peppering secondary hits are doing some. There we go. Three hundred damage and flooding. That should do it. And it does. Durbin sinks. So the enemy torpedo boat is somewhere around here, but I don't care enough about it, and I don't really want to go hunt it down. It's obviously been trying to stay out of the fight. So we will give it just a few minutes and see if we spot anything. 
This is obviously a huge victory for the German Navy. Two enemy light cruisers and a heavy cruiser sunk with no loss for the Germans. So we'll head south till, let's say, 155 here. Because the battles are apparently timed. And see if we pick anything up. Northeast. Okay. The one nice thing is with the torpedo boat, since it already fired off its uh, its torpedoes, I think it only has one left. So that would make it a much easier target. The only reason I'm kind of like still willing to hunt is the enemy does have 27 torpedo boats, so I have a feeling this war is going to get real mosquito-y real fast. He's just turning around. Now it's to the north. Let's see what the next update is. I wonder if he's just really badly damaged and just kind of like, well, no, he's too far. Time hasn't slowed down at all, so I imagine he's not very close. Yeah. Okay, northeast. We're boxing them in. Or not. I know I said I was going to end it and not just search around, so I think I probably should. 140 will end it. All right. End battle. Decisive victory for us. 1,400 victory points to only 106 for the enemy. They did get the S-18, which is sort of their uh, the one thing they can say they did, but they lost a heavy cruiser and two light cruisers. So 14 times their victory points, um, a considerable difference in crew losses, 893 to 66. We take a look at ship damage here. The Rune and the Oldenburg suffered a little bit in the way crew damage. Um, three to 10. Wow. The Oldenburg had a 10% main gun accuracy. That's what you get for a seasoned crew. But yeah, that's a pretty decisive action here. The enemy CLs have maximum bulkheads. And their CA had maximum bulkheads, so that probably explains the punishment that they took. When you compare our ships, the Rune has many bulkheads, but the Oldenburg has few, and the the Carl whatever, the, the Sidelitz class, has standard. They'll have trained crew, veterans, and many or and veterans. So the coming out of this battle, the heavy cruiser and battleship have veteran crews now, and the um, the Sidelitz class uh, armored cruiser has trained. So we'll have even better experiences with these guys in the future so pretty decisive victory there we can see in terms of unrest it drops down to zero with that victory and the naval prestige goes from 19 to 15 i believe it was the enemy goes down to 10 heavy cruisers eight light 18 light cruisers 27 torpedo boats for 6 10 18 and 11 a huge advantage almost two thousand almost three thousand more victory points for us over them and then our power projection presumably will get an even better advantage. We still have one more battle to fight this turn. A small convoy raid, a heavy cruiser, the Thor and the Gazelle, as well as a torpedo boat, the S-6, of a slower and less effective torpedo boat class than the S-18 versus two enemy light cruisers. The Thor and Gazelle, what, what are their crew experiences? Also, what guns does the Gazelle have? So the Thor, the Gazelle has six-inch guns. Okay, so she can punch. She has seasoned crews. The Thor has the same same class of ship. Oh, wait, no, the Thor is a heavy cruiser. So she's got a regular training with two six. So she's got four six-inchers versus the two on the Gazelle, but the Gazelle has torpedoes. So that should be an interesting fight because I think the British lights have seven inch guns, so they'll actually outgun us. Despite the fact that one of ours is technically a heavy. 
The Thor has many bulkheads. The Gazelle has many bulkheads. Max speed of 18.5, 19.4. So yeah, this should be pretty interesting. We'll have to be careful. But we've got regular crews and seasoned crews. So hopefully that helps us out a bit. Um, our balance is negative 2 million. Transport capacity is 101%. Tech budget's at 11. Crew training's at 100. Yeah. With that being said, that was a little bit of a longer battle, folks. So we are going to go ahead and wrap this up after just this video or this one battle. We'll fight the next battle in the next video. We're slowly wearing away the British fleet, my own mispronunciation issues aside. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.